Hey everyone, Rogue Gold here, and today I wanted to make a video going over the patch notes for Phase 2 of the Title Update 11 PTS. If you weren't aware, if you didn't see my community post, we've got a lot of news in the last 24 hours about what's kind of coming up for this update as well as the rest of the year for Division 2, including the release date for T11, which is September 22nd. So this is likely the last phase of the PTS, considering that release date is only 11 days out from where we are right now. So I wanted to go over this, give my thoughts on some of the stuff, because there is a lot of PTS. PvP changes in here, as well as some of the summit changes that they're planning for TU11 and beyond. Um, again, I did put those in a community post, but I wanted to go over them in an actual video to reach as many of you as possible so we can get an idea of what is going on. And if you wanted my further thoughts and analysis on some of the stuff that's coming later in the year, like I said, that wasn't a community post, but I am planning on doing a video on it coming later this weekend, so keep an eye out for that. We've got some pretty exciting stuff to talk about regarding the future of the franchise, but for now, let's go over what are in these patch notes. So starting off, it says, we're glad to see that you are participating in the PTS for TU11, blah, blah, blah. Wave 2 focus is on improvements to the summit and PvP balance changes. As always, feedback is appreciated in all areas, but in particular, the following areas are testing focuses. The summit, PvE game mode, PvP balance, and loot quality, i.e. addressing the rainbow loot. All right, so let's see what they have planned for that. Starting off with the summit. These are the things that are coming in the phase 2 uh, update that is uh, live on the PTS server right now, I believe. Added greater variety and diversity in objective types as you progress through the summit. That sounds really good. I don't know specifically what they are. I'm going to need to go and watch some streams, but if they can add more objectives, like I was saying in my summit video the other day, that's 100% going to be a great addition to the mode and, you know, the replayability factor of the entire thing. Change the hostage revive timer to be longer, giving more leeway to reach them before the objective fails. I've heard from a lot of people that the hostage one specifically is pretty problematic because the AI for the hostage will just run right out in the middle of the room, and especially on Legendary, it'll just get beamed down and then you can't really go and revive him because you can't, you know, <laughs> run out, otherwise you're going to die the exact same way. So, hopefully this fixes that. I feel like they should maybe make his AI a bit more defensive so he doesn't run right down the middle. We'll see how this goes, um, but that sounds good in theory. Increase the radius of the hack zone for EMP objectives. Sounds pretty good. Increase the amount of loot caches scattered around the building, which contents scale with difficulty. This is great. I think um, I've heard, I don't remember who it was now, but I've heard you know a few different people say that it would be nice if someone had a bit more of the exploration and danger from underground, where the environment was also a factor to take into consideration with the loot you could find, as well as some of the traps and like explosives on the walls and stuff. So if this is going to help with, you know, exploring exploring a bit of the environment around you in the mode, you know, increasing the loot caches, then that's great. So hopefully they can bring that and some more stuff in to really make it feel more fleshed out. And then finally, reduce the number of directives on legendary floors 91 through 100. Now, as three random directives previously had four. A lot of people have said that they don't like the force directives aspect to uh, the Summit game mode, and I would agree with that. Um, hopefully this makes it a bit less taxing when you get to those final 10 floors, but we'll see, I think. And they don't really mention it here. Let me go into this quick. They did um, note the other day, and again, I made a community post if you want to get more on that. I'll also put a link to this as well as what I'm about to talk about in the description if you want to read all this. They made a post talking about kind of the general summit feedback they've received, and they said that these are the things they're adding in for phase two and will go live with TU11, these five changes we just went over. But additionally, they're looking at some greater concepts that they want to change with the summit that will come in a TU11.1. I would say that's likely coming at the end of October, if I had to predict a date on that. And the, the core things for that they're, that they're looking at are targeted loot they're going to change up. They're going to uh, mess around with the difficulty and the reward. So that's likely going to be some of that directive stuff as well as the uh, force difficulty for specific floors. As well as somewhat of a rework or, you know, increased variety in the boss waves, which I mentioned in my own video. So I'm very glad that that's coming. I don't know why they didn't mention that here, I guess, because it's not really relevant to phase two of the PTS. But again, I will link that in the description. That's definitely a good thing to go and read so you get an idea of what's coming. And yeah, that'll likely come roughly a month after uh, T11 drops, so that's something definitely to look forward to so that we can get a, you know, better overall summit mode than what we've experienced so far on the PTS. All right, moving on to the gameplay changes. Gear mods. They are reverting the increase to status effect resistance mod values from 20% back down to 10%. That kind of sucks because that invalidates, you know, half of what my video was about yesterday. Um... Basically, what they were doing, if you didn't already know, was that they were increasing any of the resistance mods, so like Bleed, Burn, you know, Disrupt, any of those. They're currently at 10% on the live servers. They were going to double that to 20, but I guess now they're going back down to 10%. Let's read some of their reasoning here. Developer comment. 
After reviewing feedback and considering how the new generic gear mod slot system will impact the meta, we've decided to revert the changes to status effect resistance mods. The increase in flexibility towards achieving specific status effect immunity through generic gear mod slots will remain a net increase in player defense. Basically what they're saying is that since every mod slot is generic now, so you could just slot in three resistance mods on any build like I was saying in my previous video, they didn't want to necessarily give the players that much power in countering statuses because it might have been a bit too strong. I kind of agree. I mean, I, I see it where they're coming from for sure, because then you would just be able to get an automatic 70% um, protection from a specific resistance if you had the 10% hazard on your watch. I understand why that would be a bit too much. Um, I was kind of excited for it, but that's going to be how it is. But also to complement that below here, it says all improvised crafting high-end gear now have generic mod slots, including gloves and knee pads. So um, if you don't know what improvised gear is, I actually made a video on it a while ago. I'll link it on the screen if you want to go check it out. In the crafting station, you can go down all the way, scroll down on any uh, gear slots. If you go to chess piece and then you go to the very last or second to last category, there's an improvised uh, piece of gear for every single gear piece there is. So six of them, they're not branded, but what they do have, at least the whole straz right now, is a mod slot. So you, now you'll be able to get all six pieces with a mod slot if you want. So you'll lose out on three brand bonuses if you do holster knee pads and gloves, but you'll have six mods total. So you could build that same 60% resistance with six mods. So it's a different, you know, you have to spec into it a bit more if you want that much resistance off of the mods, but at least it's still an option. Um, yeah, I understand why they reverted this. I'm not too mad about it, but that's just how it is. Named items. This one I'm really excited for. The death grips are getting an increase on armor on kill from five to 10%. I was really hoping they were gonna do this because I actually wanted to try them out with a build I made a video on a few weeks ago, um, the long range SMG one. So that's really exciting to hear. It's not a huge increase, but it's something to try out for sure. And then the mop, which is the new named 612 shotgun on the PTS right now, its armor and kill is going from 5 to 10%, so that's a nice bonus. I've heard people say that shotgun's really good, so hopefully that'll be a one to go for, for sure. Moving on to exotics. The Memento, which is the new exotic backpack, lowered bonus armor gain on trophy pickup from 20 to 10% per armor core, but the bonus armor gained now stacks. Uh... I didn't know previously that didn't stack, so I'm actually glad that this is how it's going to be, even though it's a lower value per kill. Um, I still think it's going to be really strong. This backpack is probably the strongest exotic that's coming in with TU11, and so I'm still excited for it nonetheless, and I think that even though it's a, a lowered uh, amount of bonus armor per core, the fact that it can now stack is actually just making it even stronger. So really excited for that one for sure. Gear sets, Eclipse Protocol, lowered indirect transmission on kill status effect spread from 15 to 10 meters. Proliferation, which is the chest piece talent, I believe, now increases the range of indirect transmission from 10 to 15 meters and increased symptom aggravator damage amplification from 15 to 30%. So let's break down what that means. Basically, they're lowering the base amount of spread of the status effect, which... I can agree with. I think Eclipse has become super strong in any type of PvE content because, except legendary, because you can just wipe out like control points or missions. You can just wipe out like spawn rooms. As soon as a wave of ads goes in there, you kill one red, they all get it, they all die. So I understand why they're doing this. It's still going to have the 15 meter range total once you use proliferation, um, which obviously is lower than it is currently if you use the chess piece talent as well. But I think it's going to be a bit more balanced, but should still retain some of that power because then also the backpack is going is doubling in the amount of damage you get. So it's putting a, a heavier increase on gun damage that you shoot them when they're on status, uh, but it is lowering that quite the potency of the, you know, the spread. So I think that that makes sense. I'm not too upset about that. That should probably make the game a little bit more healthier in the long run, especially with how close quarter combat summit is going to be. Eclipse was probably going to reign superior if they kept the... I don't know, is it 20 or 25 meter range with the chest piece tone on live? So this makes a bit more sense. And I think in the long run, it'll probably be healthier for the game. For talents, Obliterate is going up to 25 stack out of 15. This is pretty nice. I think that means that it's going to have 25% extra damage now. I use Obliterate on some of my builds. And so this is definitely a, a welcome change in my opinion. I think it'll just be, make it a bit more viable compared to something like Unbreakable, which is also on chest pieces. So yeah, this is a great uh, change in my mind. Moving on to PVP. This is where some of the big ones are coming in. Reduce the global PvP damage modifier from 0.35 to 0.3. So that means everything in PvP will be dealing slightly less damage, which, okay, let's see what the rest is. Reverted previous changes to the pistol, rifle, and MMR PvP damage modifiers to pre-10.1 values. So if you weren't aware a while ago in a server maintenance patch, it was kind of weird, they nerfed those three types, pistols, rifles, and marksman rifles by a fair bit, by up to 30% for some of them. So those are all being reverted, I guess, which isn't quite what Bruce led on to in 
in his tweet about it, but those are all going to be more uh, powerful than they are currently on the live game. And then everything is being brought down a little bit. So maybe that's the the logic there is that everything's being brought down while these are being buffed up. So some of those high end marksman rifle builds that people were saying were too, uh, too much nerfed after that change, those should be a bit more viable now. And so that'll be interesting to see how that plays out on the PTS. Small increase to shotgun damage PVP modifier to match global damage reduction and retain pre TU 11 time to kill. That's a little bit confusing. I think what it's saying is that they're just changing something within TU 11 to make it match what it is currently in TU 10. So shotgun should be about the same. Same. Slight reduction to overall SMG PvP damage. Definitely needed. Um, some of those are really strong, especially the Lady Death, but we will get to the Lady Death in just a second here because it is getting a nerf. Here's a developer comment on that stuff. The above changes should result in a small increase to time to kill at medium to close range while keeping rifles and marksman rifles deadly at long ranges. In theory, that's perfect. That's exactly what we need because right now, too many builds are in sync. Adrenaline rush, intimidate, run up in your face with 3% armor regen, and melt you. It's really annoying. I I hate tanky metas in, in this game and Division 1, and the fact that it's here right now is just, you know, makes me really mad. So if these changes does pull off, you know, kind of reducing the potency of that, then I'm all for it. We'll see if it really does, because it doesn't seem that drastic, but we'll just have to wait and see. Moving down below that, Crusader, Reflector, and Striker shields now take 33% more damage in PvP. Yes, please. I'm very glad about this. Shields are out of control with how many people use them and it's just a crutch for so many people to use that half shield and be able to shoot over it so i really hope this you know forces people to take a better look at what other options they have to use to make a bit more of an interesting pvp environment and it is going to be very nice to be able to just melt those down a little bit faster especially when people aren't specced into them if they're just using armor rules to get the cores on there I really hope this uh, has a positive impact on PvP, and I really think it will. Riot Foam Chem Launcher Base and Snare Duration lowered from 3 to 2 seconds in PvP. I think I've talked about this before, so I'm not going to go into it for a super long time, but I don't think this is going to do anything. I don't think the problem in PvP is the base duration of the Riot Foam. The problem is that it can trap you in place when someone is 2 meters away from you, and then they basically get a free kill because of how high the headshot multiplier is when you shoot someone from that close and how easy it is for them to hit it, right, when you're standing still. So I think that's the main problem. We'll see if this does anything. I don't really think it's going to, but I have seen a lot less people using Riot Foam over the past few weeks, so I think overall the problem is getting, you know, less less severe, so we'll see what this does to it. I'm not thinking it's going to do a ton, but we'll just have to wait and see. Firewall Specialization Talent Fiery Response no longer applies a 5 meter burn on Armor Break in PvP. Again, great. Just like the shield one, this is very sorely needed, and I'm excited to see what this does, and hopefully people switch up a bit what they use, because Firewall and a shield has been a combo ever since Warlords, basically, so I'm very excited for this one. Um, yeah. Not much to say on that other than it's great. Eclipse Protocol hasn't escaped the nerf hammer yet. Indirect transmission on kill status effect spread lowered from 15 meters to 5 meters in PvP. 7 meters with the proliferation chest talent. Some people are going to be upset by this. I think it's really good. Eclipse, in in theory, Eclipse is a very cool set, right? In PvE especially, it's a very cool set. Gives you very cool options if you're a status effect player. But in PvP, it's just cheesy, man. If you kill one guy because he's poorly positioned, you can hit him easily with, I don't know, a fire chem and he burns to death. Why should that punish the guy that's two rooms over holding out in a well-positioned spot? You know what I mean? So I think this is going to make it so that if someone gets on fire and they run straight back to their healer to try and get healed up, they're going to get punished if they die, The that team is, because they're all going to burn to death. And I think that makes sense. But it shouldn't punish someone who's not even on the same team as the guy who gets burned just because you're within, I don't know, 20 meters of him. Like, that doesn't make much sense. I'm excited for this change. If you're not, I'm sorry, but it was probably pretty needed. So I'm excited for this one. Yeah, here's the big one or not so much in my mind, but Lady Death's Breathe 3 weapon talent amplification effect lowered from 75 to 50% in PvP. I don't think this is going to do much. I think when you're using Adrenaline Rush, Intimidate, and the Lady Death, at the point where you're getting, what is it, 110% damage with 75% from the stacks and 35% from Intimidate, taking away 25% from that, you're not going to notice that. You're still going to get melted even when someone's running four armor cores. I think the true issue is that tanks are able to get damage in PvP. It has been Div 1, it has been Div 2. I've made countless videos on it. That's the real issue here. I don't think nerfing the Lady Death by a little bit in PvP is going to do much. Yeah, I don't think you're going to notice it, but at least it's not, at least they're addressing it in some fashion. We'll see what it does. I don't think it's going to do a whole lot, but we will just have to see, I suppose. Headhunter buff duration lowered from 30 seconds to 5 seconds in PvP. Headhunter damage bonus lowered from 40% to 20% in PvP and 25% with perfect headhunter. Okay, I, I never saw that many people using it in PvP, but I suppose if it needed a nerf, it needed a nerf. Um, yeah, I suppose it is a bit better considering they also buffed marksman rifles in the same update, so there shouldn't be too much change over 
overall, if you're using that build, you'll get buffed in one aspect, nerfed to another. We'll see how it goes. I don't think Headhunter was ever widely used in PvP, so yeah, we'll see how that is. And then down here, they just had a few bug fixes, including people not being able to finish the final floor of Summit without killing the enemies. I won't spoil it, but everyone knows what's up there at this point. Um, so they will no longer be able to shoot through walls. Fixed an issue causing only one type of enemy to spawn in the summit on legendary difficulty. It was a bug. I called it in my summit video. I was saying they really need to increase the kind of the variety of enemy compositions once you get to legendary. All you're seeing is assaults. Well, it was a bug. Now you'll get heavies, you'll get drone operators, dogs, you'll have the full range of legendary enemies, and it should make it a lot more engaging and fun to play through than it was previously with just assaults. Fix an issue causing enemies to shoot through walls on the floor. Okay, we covered that. Fix an issue that caused you to be matched with the summit group when matchmaking for a main mission. All right. They fixed some other stuff with the summit that we wouldn't really care about, I suppose. Fix a mission specialization tutorial when boosting a new character to level 30. All right. And fix an issue which caused all trap variants to become stuck in the ceiling. That's probably a good one to get fixed. Okay, guys. Well, that covers it for our coverage of the title update 11 PTS phase two patch notes. Again, I just wanted to go over these because there were some pretty significant ones with the summit and pvp definitely the highlight ones for me are eclipse the shield and firewall for pvp i think those three combined are going to make pvp a lot better not not fix it because instinct didn't get looked at intimidate adrenaline rush and lady death didn't really get looked at I me mean, i know lady death got a tiny buff again i don't think that's going to do much Overall, I think those three things are still going to reign superior, but I am glad that some other things are being tuned down to hopefully make it a bit more balanced. But yeah, those are still going to reign. So if you enjoy using those builds, you're going to enjoy them for another update, it looks like. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and be sure to subscribe with notifications on so you can be updated every time I upload. I do plan on doing another video very soon this weekend to talk about the news we got at UB Forward. Um, if you didn't know, basically they announced some of the new season stuff, confirmed the leaks, as well as announced a new limited time mode for this winter, which is really exciting. Um, so yeah, there's a lot to talk about with that, especially with the leaks, because it really kind of tells us what is going to happen in the future and next year with the rest of Div 2 and potentially Division 3. I have a lot of interesting thoughts I want to give on that, so definitely stay tuned for those videos. And yeah, guys, let me know down in the comments your thoughts on these changes for the PTS Phase 2. If you like the summit changes, if you think it's not enough, the PvP, everything, let me know down there, because I'm interested to hear what everyone has to say. But that does it. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day, and until the next one, guys, Rogue Gold, out.